Hello, I'm Lee Watts with Tandem Light Press, and I am here today with our author, Jay Hurt, and his beautiful wife, Tawana Hurt. We are here to talk a little bit about marriage, specifically the marriage of Jay and Tawana, as he has just finished publishing his book, Before You Jump the Broom, correct? Did I get it right, Jay? Absolutely. Before Let's see that beautiful broom. book. The premarital guidebook for African American couples. I love it. I love it. Let before we dive into with um, the interview with both you and Tawana, tell me a little bit more about why you chose to focus on African American couples. So good question. Um, actually, it, it it focuses around and centers around when Tawana and I got married. So we've been married now for six years. I hope I got that right. And um, when we went to premarital counseling, we had a great premarital counseling class um, back where we lived a while back in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, but one of the challenges was I felt like the guidebook didn't have all of the information that really pertained to African American couples, right? So it was it was great for other other cultures, but I think there was some diversity left out and some things that they missed. So I thought, hey, I'm a relationship coach. I've been a relationship coach for nine years. I think that's a gap where I can fill in some things. So I developed this book, took me a while to write it, write a few months, and then I worked on that and worked with you guys. And here we are. We've got a guidebook, I think, that's going to help couples really work through challenges here in the 21st century, um, yeah. specifically in the 2020s, where things have changed. Every, you know, everything's changed with COVID. Everything's changed since this summer with, with race, race relations and, and mm -hmm. cultural differences. And I think that couples now go through different things than my parents did and my grandparents did. And I, I want to help them think about life um, in this era as opposed to what they came up in. Oh, very interesting. I like that this era because things do change. And oftentimes we read these books and we feel like it's not applicable to what's going on with relationships in society right now. So this will be great, great, great. So as we think about the book and as you begin to talk more about the book, let's talk about a little bit about your background, um, both you and Tawana. So you said that you have been married for six years. How did you all meet? Um, you want to take that back? I'd like to hear your <laughs> <laughs> So my perspective is um, we have mutual friends who cared a lot about us and they thought, hey, we should set them up on a blind date. So her friend is the, the they're, they're married now as well. So her friend's the wife and my friend's the husband and they thought there were some things that we might connect on. So they brought us together at uh, Ruby Tuesday. Oh, Charlie's, oh, Charlie's, yes. And so we had a blind date at Oh, Charlie's. Things went pretty well. Great. And I invited her to Starbucks. We kicked them out and we've been together ever since. How'd I do? Okay. That's about it, right, Tawana? That's yeah. the version. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my friend, um, we worked together and she had been dating this guy for a really long time and I knew him as well. And one day she just came to me and she was just like, um, me and me and such and such her 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 partner want to set you up with someone and i was like you know you know the first reaction yeah. i do whenever someone's trying to set you up and she's like no no he's a really good guy the son third and so um she told me his name and um i googled him but he googled me too so <laughs> good, smart smart See, that's one of those tips in your book. Like now everybody's Googleable. Googleable. So hey. <laughs> Before you jump the room. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Exactly. Do your homework. Do your due diligence. So yeah. um, I saw that he was already an author at that point. He had already um published one book. And um, so, you know, I was like, well, at least I can go eat. Like <laughs> I'm not right, right. You know, I can go eat. So ended up being late, actually, to the, um, it was a blind double date, actually. So I should say that. So I didn't, I wasn't just late and set him up or anything, but um, it was a double date with our friends. And, um, she, and yeah. She was of, late, y'all. Don't let her sugarcoat that. <laughs> she was like 15 or 20 minutes late. I'm like, what? Like he makes on? it sound like it's like an hour or something. <laughs> 
15 minutes is not late. Uh, <laughs> That's a that's a that's a grand entrance. Is what yes, called. yes, <laughs> making a statement. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, like you said, we um, we we kind of I guess briefly talked during the dinner. You know, when you got other people around, um, there's only so much talking you're gonna do. So he did invite me to Starbucks after, and um, we talked for a while. And yeah, we've been talking ever since. Wonderful. I love that talking ever, ever, ever since. Um, so tell me, Jay, how did you know she was the one? How did you know? Uh, how long did you all date? How long did we date? I think we dated about a year and a half before I proposed. Okay. About a year, about a year and seven months to be exact, I think. And um, see, I'm good. So um, <laughs> How did I know she was the one? So I think, you know, I, I even talk about this in, in this book and I talk about it in a previous book. I think there, there are really three, three things that are important to know that someone is right with you and they really fit with you, right? So I think, the, I think attraction is the first law of relationship. You have to be physically attracted. Don't let anybody lie to you and tell you differently. Yes, that yes. is important. I don't want to see somebody that I don't want to see forever. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yes. So that's one. I think you have to have true compatibility, mm -hmm. right? That your lives are compatible, that things fit naturally. It's not a struggle to make them fit. And I think finally, there has to be chemistry, right? So, um, you know, you have to have this, this thing between you, right? This natural connection that we have. And I think we have all three of those. So, you know, inside of that, there are other things, right? Like inside of compatibility, there are values and things like that. So, for me, I, I knew that she was the one when she could deal with my brand of foolishness and she could take my banter and she cared about me regardless of all of that. And she's always been by my side. She's always been supportive. Um, she loves our daughter. Um, she's, uh, and actually I have two daughters. So she, she loves my daughters and she's just been there like, you know, my ride or die from day That's one. That's awesome. Wow. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Tawana, how did you know he was the one? So, so first, before I go into that, this is where um, we would have banter because the whole ride or die thing, you know, you've seen those memes that be like, where are we riding and why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would mean, not classify myself that way, but you know, that's very sweet. I, I, yes. I understand what you were trying to say. I'm sure as an accountant, you would be like, well, first of all, how much is this going to cost? <laughs> like, where are we going? Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. So, um, so I'm going to apologize off the bat because I am a weird type of person. I'm very literal and I'm very, I, it, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just weird. So, so the reason that I say that is because when you ask the question, how did I know he was the one? So I don't necessarily believe in the one. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and and a little bit of my background is I was married before. And um, so I can tell you what made me say yes. Okay. So what made me say yes is that, um, he was my friend mm. and he made that um, distinct distinction pretty early on in the relationship. Um, yes, he was courting me and all of that kind of thing, but he was really trying to get to know me as a person. He would always have conversations with me um, as if he were not, you know, the person I was dating. He was like, he would, he, he would even set it up or frame it to be like, you know, um, if, if, you know, if, it, if whoever you're going to be with, whether it's me or whomever, you might consider or something like that. You know, I don't know if he was coaching me back then <laughs> or I'm what, coach, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, so he was my friend. He was, wasn't afraid to tell me things that I might not want to hear. He's very honest. Um, and um, I enjoy, I enjoyed him. And I think that's important because a lot of times people get into relationships and they're all about the butterflies and they're yeah. all 
about the whining and dining and all of that kind of thing. But, you know, and that's great. There's nothing against any of that. But, you know, I, like I said, I've been around the block and I know that stuff isn't what makes a relationship last. Exactly. <laughs> there is, there are going to be times when you don't like each other. So, um, it's good if they're your friend because you never like want to stay mad at your friend. You never want to like, you always want to reconcile that. So, right. um, so yeah, we just, um, I think we have similar personalities, um, similar in our humor, similar in our taste for things. Um, we both enjoy music. We both enjoy experiences. Um, so yeah, I, I asked myself, could I see myself, um, sharing life with him and, um, you know, forever. And that answer was yes. So I said, wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. <laughs> so, um, you kind of both have answered this in, in different ways, but wanted to see if anything else would come out of this other than friendship, because clearly that is one of the foundations of your marriage, that you, you guys were clearly friends before. But what are some other keys, in your opinion, to a successful marriage? Um, there are several. One that comes to mind is trust, right? And I think trust and honesty are cousins and close cousins, first cousins, right? And I think that's really important to be trusting, to be honest, to be open. Um, one of the things that, that I see often with couples before they get married is that they don't really, they don't really dive into, you know, their backgrounds, their history, what's going on, you know, uh, what's the environment that they grew up in, right? right. Did they have, did they come from a, a single parent home? Did the grandparents raise them? You know, were they raised by a single mom or a single dad? Um, was there, other dysfunction in the home, right? Was there drug abuse or physical abuse or psychological or mental abuse, right? So understanding these things really helps build that level of trust and that level of honesty, right? When you go back into somebody's past, even something as simple as what your credit score is. I'm like, yo, this is what my credit score is. It's not 850. <laughs> right. ready, ready for that, right? How much debt do you have? Like real talk. I have a I have some folks that I know that I've talked to that are like, I had no idea how much debt this person had when I married them. I need to know. Yeah, right? Because be your debt becomes my debt. Because your mm -hmm. debt becomes my debt, right? We, the two become one. So that's, that's so important. So being, so those are two really important keys. There are lots, right? And, and I'll get to some of those others, but I think trust and honesty are just, I mean, they're right there at the top of the list. What do you think, babe? I think that it's important to know how the other person views the world, um, spiritually, politically, you know, with your families, um, all kinds of things, because it's like, so it's great to have things in common, like your hobbies and all of that kind of thing. But when life happens, <laughs> mm -hmm. how, how do you view the world versus how do I view the, view the world? Do we view it the same? Because if I am having an issue with something that has happened, but you don't view it the same way that I do or can't even have the compassion to understand or, or try to be there to support me, then that's going to cause a friction between us. So now I'm having this issue with whatever has happened in the world and I'm fighting you at the same time when you're supposed to be my safe place. Right. So, so I definitely think you need to know where the other person stands on these issues, how you view the world together, and how do you resolve conflict? There's going to be conflict. You yeah. are totally different people with two totally different backgrounds and um, not everyone understands how to resolve mm -hmm. conflict well. Some people are very um, volatile. Some people go inward and are just, you know, conflict adverse. And neither one of them is, is helpful. Right, <laughs> right, yes. So, um, so yeah, those are two mm -hmm. very important things that I think um, people need to know in order to be successful. So as for the viewer who is, um, maybe dating someone and preparing for marriage, 
Um, we'll start with you, Tawana, but what advice would you give the woman um, as she's thinking about, I, I need to be the best that I can be for this potential husband. What, what are some things that maybe she can do internally to prepare to be a good wife? Um, don't prepare to be a good wife. Prepare, oh, oh. prepare to be a good person. <laughs> I uh, love that. That's a tweet. Okay. <laughs> so you have to, you know, a lot of times we hear that marriage is 50, 50. It's not, it's 100, 100. You're bringing 100% of yourself. He's bringing 100% of himself. So you have to know who you are and what you bring to the table. What do you bring to the table? If you can't think of what you bring to the table, then maybe you should work on that before getting into a relationship. <laughs> because, um, because you can't find your identity in your marriage. You have to have an identity of your own prior to getting married. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh. It was a little harder than how we fixed okay, it. Okay, okay. With the camera. But yeah, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes these men get out of pocket and you have to remind them of who you are. So okay. you have to know <laughs> already set. Now, as far as it relates to what you want to do in the marriage, as far as being a wife. So we don't believe in, in gender roles, I guess we call it, right. or traditional Not necessarily, roles or whatever. Right. Traditional gender yeah, roles. traditional gender roles. So we believe in operating your gifting. Operate wherever, like his, he thinks he does laundry better than I do. See how she said that, y'all. <laughs> saw that. She, I saw that. <laughs> so if he want to do the laundry, he can have it. <laughs> like, I'm not going to fight you over that. Right. So, um, and, you know, he, um, he acts like he can't cook. Um, so that's my area, you know. Right, right. So, it's not a, a thing of preparing to be a wife. It's a thing of just being whole within yourself. And when you get into a relationship, talk about what you want to do. Um, what does what your mar marriage look like? You know, you cultivate that. There's, there's not even, there's not a book and there's not, you know, anyone out there that tells you that your marriage is supposed to look like this. Your marriage is however you design it to be. Yeah, I love that. I love it. Jay, what would you say? So I think that, um, well, let me ask you. So, so you want me to ask what, uh, what are the right traits for a wife? Yeah. Or for, um, I, from the male perspective for okay. our man, he's like, okay, I think I want to propose. Am I ready? Okay. So I think it's important to, um, first of all, understand that you have someone that is not perfect, but they are 100% of whomever they are, right? They're not mm -hmm. bringing 50% expecting you to bring the other 50% and y'all make a whole, you need to be, you want someone that's 100% um, in and of themselves, right? They have their own self-confidence, they have their own self-esteem, they have their beliefs and values. You, you hope that they merge and that they're compatible, but they have a foundation that they built up on, right? So when you have that foundation you built up on, the rest of it really becomes easy. Now I know, okay, I see this in this woman, I see her values, I see her strengths, I see her gifts, I see how she's able to love me and what her um, love language is and how she kind of um, walks in her love language and can it blend with mine and can, can those things mesh together? Right. So those are the things that I'm looking for. I'm not necessarily looking for somebody who cooks and cleans and, you know, does the dishes and, you know, whatever, all that good stuff. Right. And, you know, great mom or all those things. Those things are nice. Yeah. But but I, you know, if I say I want a woman that does the laundry and I can do the laundry and I can right. take that off her plate. Yes, I can do laundry and I can take that off her plate then why does she need to do that, right? I can, I can handle that. I can do everybody's laundry you in the house. It, so, <laughs> so, it so, does it well. So yeah, so, so yeah, you want somebody that, that walks in their gifts, they walk in their talents, and they're confident in them. Again, it doesn't mean that they're perfect, but they are 100% whole um, as the best that they can be. They're the best version of themselves, I think is the way I would summarize that. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
Um, so before we begin to close out this um, interview, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the book, Jay. Okay. And um, let's see that beautiful book again. So is it an actual read straight through book or is it a workbook? So really good question. It is a workbook, right? Um, in theory, you could read it straight through and, and get some, some knowledge and tips from it, but it is a workbook. There are exercises in every chapter, um, and the exercises are important because the exercises are what puts the, they put the practical piece together with the, with the head knowledge that you're getting, right? So the reading is important and the study is important, but when you do an exercise, nice. and I'll give you an example, I'll give you an example of one of the exercises. So one of the exercises talks about how we try to work to, to kind of straighten each other out, right? And I say for the couples to, for them both to take a paper clip and we're trying to, we're trying to bring ourselves as close back to whole as possible. So take the paper clip and unfold it, right? And mm -hmm. when you unfold, the, I don't have one here. When you unfold the paper clip, then what I want you to do is both of you to put it back together as close to perfect as you can, as close to the model, right? We'll have a regular paper clip here as close to the model. Well, guess what? Nobody can fold a paper clip back the way that it started, but they can get as close as they can. And that's what we do in our relationships. Often. I love it. We to try to bring ourselves back as close to whole as we can to do the work, be okay with the flaws, right? Learn how to live through the flaws and work with them. But this is essentially what we are. We're, we're, redesign paper clips as we live and breathe and become one together. Great. I love it. I love it. That's so awesome. Um, how can we get, well, first let me um, just clarify. So a couple, each, each cup, each person in, within the couple, the two should have a copy of the book or can they share the book? Each person should have their own copy of the book because there are some things specifically in the book that are going to talk to each person. There are some, some intimate things that each person wants to work on and those type of things. So each person should definitely have a copy of the book. Um, the book is going to be a part of my membership site. And when you come into our membership site, you both get a copy of the book. <clears throat> You're able to work through that in the membership site. And then we're also, <clears throat> excuse me, we're also um, expanding and working with churches. So look, look for that in the, in the near future as well. <clears throat> and it will be a part of the, thank you, it will be a part of the um, the curriculum in churches doing premarital counseling. So that's where it'll be available. There's also that, a place to write in here, so you probably want to have your own. Oh, yeah. Write so your own you, thoughts. Write freely, yes. Um, speaking of membership, there was one question, that actually, I, I wanted to come back to um, from the very beginning, and it ties in with the membership. Um, I noticed that you guys both mentioned you met because of friends and how, and, and I like, I think it was Jay that mentioned um, we had friends that really cared about us and, and wanted to bring you all together. So I think the importance of having a good tribe and just people around you who actually care that you're gonna make the biggest decision of your life. And, um, and I think having a membership site where there will be people who all value marriage and seeing successful marriages is, is a really awesome thing. Is that a little of the reason why you decided to create this membership? She can stay. That's fine. Our cat, our cat wants to be in the video. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yes, um, actually we'll, so we'll do things in the site, like have Q and A's and we'll have conversations among the members. We'll have masterminds in the site for the VIPs. So there will be opportunities to interact because this is not just like a one track thing where it's just me giving information <clears throat> to everybody. It's everybody sharing and interacting and everybody learning from each other, right? And becoming better and stronger. Yes, yeah, she's just taking over. But, <laughs> but, but yes, that's absolutely, you know, that's absolutely what we anticipate and what we hope for um, in the membership site. So that's the goal. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm so glad we got a chance to talk about this book and also about your marriage and relationships. This, this adds another layer to 
um, things that you've already shared with me. I love Tawana's perspective and outlook as well. Like, I'm like, girl, you need to have your own little group. We can all come and talk, you know, um, but it, it was awesome. And just even as a person seeking to get married again soon, um, I learned a lot today. So thank you so much. And I can't wait to get my copy. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you Lee. Lee. Look forward to getting it to you.